Is metal roofing good in snow country? How does standing seam metal roofing stand up to cold weather? That's what we're talking about in today's Q&A Monday. What's up guys, welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and every Wednesday. Today we are talking about cold weather metal roofing how the installation changes, how assembly design changes, and some common questions that we get on this channel about cold weather roofing. It's a subject we haven't touched too much on, but I'm excited to bring it to you today. All the questions we discuss are in the description down below. You can jump ahead using those quick links. So we have Dave Stubbs and Jeff Hawk from the Sheffield Metals Technical Department with us. Guys, I'm excited to talk about this because at the beginning of December 2020, uh, up in Northeast Ohio, we got some major snow, some record-breaking snowfall, and I'm kind of interested to learn some of this myself. So why don't we start first with panel profiles. Does panel profile choice, is that affected by or in areas that have heavy snow loads, or, or how, how does that factor in? So I'd say panel choice is going to be affected, you know, anytime you have any extenuating circumstances, you know, high winds, heavy snows, things like that. Obviously the slopey roof's gonna matter. Uh, the style of roof you have, if you have any areas where, you know, you might have buildups of snow. Um, you know, I've heard of snow thawing and freezing, expanding, opening it up, snap lock seams, opening it up, uh, mechanical seams. So yeah, I mean, the panel profile is just as important as, you know, the other situations you have going on with the roof as far as design and things like that. It goes into the roof assembly. It goes into um, not just the climate, but you know what's the building use. Um, I think it's important to recognize you know both building use. You know Jeff touched on it. What does the roof look like? Uh, is it is it cut up? Is there a lot of valleys? You know valleys are what I consider a, a, a heavy snow predicament at times because uh, the valleys will hold the water which turns into ice, which started as snow, but inevitably it'll be ice at some point. So Dave, as you were saying, this does affect the overall assembly as well. So let's say I'm building a new house. I'm in snow country. We get a lot of snow every single year. Talk to me about just what are some of the first couple things that I should be thinking about when it comes to my new house build and putting a metal roof on it. Type of underlayment, number one, the first one I think about is um, you know, the underlayment you're going to be using, the slope of your roof, uh, making sure that the underlayment that you're picking is designed to be used in cold temperatures, especially if your roof is being installed in the winter. You know, a lot of underlayments have minimum temperatures that you're allowed to put them on in. So, you know, if you're in an area where it gets pretty cold and they're doing your roof in the winter time, the underlayment that you put down might not stick the way it should. You know, and that can cause some issues, obviously, down the road. And just while we're talking about underlayment real quick, um, you know, making sure that your underlayment has the type of warranty that you need based on the longevity of the roof system you put it on. You know, I always stress that in the videos where we talk about underlayment. Um, you know, it's to me, it's not preferable to put a five-year warranted product underneath the roof that should last 50 plus years. So underlayment is, uh, you know, one of the number one things as far as, the first step of putting your roof on uh, what to look at. Uh, there's so many considerations, uh, underlayment and structural support. I know, I know where I live in Colorado that the studies have shown that since 2000, we're in 2020, so in 20 years, our snow has changed. It's holding 20% more moisture than it did 20 years ago, which sounds crazy, but if you, you know, it, it's going to weigh that much more. So uh, I think all these, these you know, snow load um, assessments uh, per the code are going to have to be revisited at least, uh, reconsidered. Uh, I know Telluride has, uh, up in the mountains of Colorado, has 100 PSI. That's a lot. But if you increase that by 20%, good heavens, that's, that's restructure to existing buildings. They were only built in 2000. That's a, a, a heavy, heavy cost to uh, re-engineer or engineer to that capacity. Underlayment's one, structural support is, is another. I, I see too often that we're using 7 16 as a substrate on, on, on buildings, whether it's commercial or residential. I think that needs to be re revisited as well. We, we don't consider that a, a substantial substrate. 
So it sounds like it's, it's not just, do you get snow or do you not get snow? There's a lot of different layers and every single location is different and that will all go into uh, how your assembly is designed. The code is different in different locales uh, when it comes to snow. So it sounds like there's a lot more to it than just snow country or not snow country. Absolutely. And, and just to go back to what Dave was saying, as far as loads and structural support, you know, when you have a roof with a, a roof deck, you know, the, the framing, the building, the decking itself is taken on the live load from the snow. Um, whereas in, if you had an open framing building, then you're depending on the panel to hold the load of the snow. So those are going to be different. So when Dave's talking about, you know, having your structure be strong enough to be able to hold the, uh, the weight of the possible loads that are going on it, that's, that's, that's not, you know, small time stuff. That's engineers. That's, you know, before your roof goes on, your building is built, things like that. So those are all good things to talk about, especially if you're having a new home uh, built, you know, what those capabilities are going to be. And, you know, especially as codes change, they don't, they don't get lighter, they get stricter. So anything you can do to, you know, up your percentage of a safety factor, you know, is always something to consider. Absolutely. And the other thing I always tell people, uh, you know, if you want to put a 312 in a roof pitch on your house, go 412, please. But give it more pitch. The more pitch, the better. The better, you know, the snow gets off the roof, the less chance for snow to build up and and all those catastrophic things that can happen. We've, you know, had some some real issues with record snows in Colorado over the last, the last year was a record snow. I know of a building that had 185 inches of snow um, on it at one time. And, and I'm positive that building was not designed for that kind of a load. And then I always suggest, you know, pitching the roof a little bit more than what you think you need. And then, you know, somebody wants to put on snow guards or a snow fence or something like that. And that too adds on to, uh, how much snow is going to end up on your roof and remain on your roof. Yeah, let's talk about some snow retention systems. You know, when when are some times where you would want the snow to be evacuated from the roof? And when are some times where you want snow guards to keep that snow on the roof for a, a period of time? Well, you know, the areas that I've always been told there's recommended for snow guards are, you know, over walkways, over doorways over garages, anywhere that falling snow could either potentially damage property or injure people. You know, you don't want to be carrying your groceries in from the car. And the next thing you know, you get pounded with uh, snow that's six feet up on your roof and foot deep. Yeah, snow's heavy. I mean, when it's coming off the roof and when it comes off a metal roof, it's coming fast. And, and you know, I've seen some, some catastrophic injuries. I've seen some, uh, some really nice cars ruined. Uh, you know, under a portico shear at some of the hotel, the local hotels here in Colorado, um, where after the fact they said, "Hey, we need some snow retention," and that's that's capable of not not eliminating but minimizing the, the catastrophic impact of the snow coming off the roof, or even slow it down a little bit so that it's not coming off so hard. What are some factors when it comes to actual snow retention choice? Because there there are different ones out there. So talk to me about that. You know, there's two ways that, to answer that question. As far as the different types of products, you know, you have clamp on and then glue on. From my experience, the glue on ones last a while, but eventually they're going to snap off. And then you're going to have the base where it's been sealed to your roof deck and then that's it. And then you have the clamp on ones and there's all different styles as far as whether it's, you know, snow fences or just snow guards and things like that. They seem to work better. And if you do, you can do maintenance on them as far as, you know, making sure things are tightened down and things like that. Whereas the alternative is it's either stuck or it's not. I would say as far as, you know, how many snow guards you need, how many rows, how many far apart, you know, I would consult with, uh, you know, the snow guard company and have them do a layout of your roof based on the area you're in and, you know, what it is it's going to take to keep that roof, you know, on the roof or keep that snow on the roof, excuse me. I want to touch on something that Jeff, you mentioned a little bit before when you talked about underlayment and installing underlayment in low temperatures. What other pieces of the actual installation can be affected if you are installing during the winter in low temperatures? Are there any considerations there that an installer should know? Installers got to have a, a realization that, that the surfaces change, um, the material changes a little bit. Um, you know, the metal is, 
the metal is tightened up or it's, you know, it's, it's a slightly more dense. Um, the surface in which you're installing on can have a, a, some amount of moisture on it that you can't necessarily see, which is a can be horrible for traction and keeping yourself on the roof. And the other part is people don't really understand. It slows everything down. Cold weather slows everything down. The install is not going to go as fast, whether you're doing the underlayment, installing panels, installing trim, you move a little slower. The tools don't seem to work as fast. I know it's, you know, upwards of 25% as far as just everything just takes a little longer. What about products? Like, uh, as Jeff mentioned, underlayment, what about sealant and, and things like that? Is curing time affected? Talk to me about that. I would imagine the curing time is going to be affected. Um, usually different sealants have different rates of cure based on the temperatures that they're being installed in, you know, butyl tape and things like that. I imagine it'll still stay flexible and tacky, but you know, again, it's, it's probably not being left in a, you know, on the ground. So you're waiting to use it. It's getting brought out as necessary. Um, but I do know the cure rates of temperature uh, of sealants uh, are affected by the temperature and how fast they'll set up and whatnot. You know, as far as the actual metal pieces, you know, like Dave said, you, you know, especially if your panels are stored outside, you can, it's probably a safe bet that those panels are going to be contracted as far as uh, they're going to go. So you're going to want to make sure that you leave enough room for them to expand and not come unhooked at the eve and, uh, you know, off offset cleats and things like that. You know, definitely agree with the slower part. Um, you ever tried to install a screw with a glove on? It goes a lot slower than without a glove on. Yeah, for sure. I, you know, I'm sure we're all on the same page. Always refer to your manufacturer's suggested installation recommendations. Um, I will say with tacky tape, trying to stick it to metal, uh, when the metal gets cold, it tends to have some sort of condensation on it. So the tacky tape doesn't stick as fast or as, as much as it is when it's hot. Uh, you know, it's more like a, a hot Wrigley's gum when it's, when it's really warm out, but when it's cold, it's not quite as viscous. And then that metal just has a little bit of condensation on it. It won't stick quite as well. Um, but definitely, you know, refer to your, your manufacturer's recommended guidelines. Installing in, in the, with the winter time, you're moving slower. Things are slicker. You know, you definitely want to make sure that you're safe and you're doing every, all the safety precautions you can to, uh, to make sure that there's no incidents on the roof and, you know, everybody goes home the way they showed up in the morning. Yeah, absolutely. And we did a great video at MetalCon last year uh, in 2019 talking with different roofing contractors and, and how they handle cold weather and, and how they keep their crew safe and, and what they do in order to do that. Um, and that's a really great video. You guys check that out. Links in the description. All right. Last question that I have is about ice dams. And it's something that, that we hear here and there when it comes to construction and cold weather. Tell me what that means when it comes to a roofing system and how does that make a difference with roofing choice? So you have a roof and you have an overhang of your roof, right? If it's inside the four walls, your roof is heated and your roof might be a little bit warmer than say if it's past your soffit area where your roof is colder. So that warmer snow comes down and it freezes forming a dam at your eaves and conditions that are outside the building envelope that aren't heated. You know, they make products to help relieve that. Um, and the, they've also come up with new designs of metal roofs as far as, you know, cold roofs and things like that, where the temperature stays consistent throughout the whole surface of the roof. But, um, you know, there's different assemblies that are coming about that address the whole ice damming issues, again, like the cold roofs. Um, or they have things, you know, like heat tape, and whatnot, and it's basically a wire that provides a small electrical charge and heats up, and it basically provi prevents the ice from forming. You'll see it a lot at eaves and uh, use in gutters and things like that, from, so you know you don't have a big ice block in your gutter. Yeah, and even ice dams aside, the freeze thaw, you know, if especially like like here in Northeast Ohio, right? We got 12 inches of snow one day. Two days later, it was 55 degrees, right? And then we got snow two days later again. So how does that affect your roof? Well, so many times we've, we, we come across that, even shaded areas. Um, you know, talking to a lot of people in North, uh, whether it be uh, North Dakota or Minnesota, it's amazing the change of, of temperature just on the other side of a chimney from the shade to the sun. And so when you have that melt, 
um, which would be in the sun. And then you have the freeze, which would be in the shade, which it could be 50 degrees in the sun on a metal roof and 22 degrees a foot away. Um, ambient temperature doesn't travel much. That, that sunlight um, really affects the way the moisture melts or the snow melts or even the ice melts. And then once it reaches another freezing area, that stops and can build up. And that cycle is what causes ice damming, that cycle over and over and over again. It happens so often on eaves, uh, so often on the, on the upper side of chimneys, especially on the north side. Colorado's the same way, Thad. We, we get, you know, it's 70 degrees one day. We get eight inches of snow the next, and then it's 70 degrees the day after. And so that cycle really affects the way your, uh, your roof is, is perf- you know, performing at the time. And, and those cycles are really tough. So we live in a really, you really need a high performance roof. Metal is situated for that. Ice damming can happen not only on metal roofs, it can happen on, on any other uh, steep roof system and, and even on flat roof systems. When you have a freeze thaw, uh, generally those, the, the water should escape from a scupper box or something like that. And that cycle, that freeze thaw, it just never thoroughly thaws out enough to get the moisture out the roof. When, you know, when water freezes, it expands, you know, and it, it, it's going to take, you know, it doesn't really care what it's, what's in its way. If, uh, you know, you have a snap lock seam or you have a, a 180 degree seam, if there's moisture in there and it, and it freezes, it expands, it can pop things open. So, you know, is it common? Probably not as common as I'm making it sound, <laughs> but you know, it is something to be aware of. And, you know, you want to make sure, again, this goes back to the design of the roof and things like that, that you, uh, you address any potential design concerns, you know, before you find out that you have a problem. All right, I think that's a good place to end on. Guys, thanks so much. I'm really excited that we got to share some cold weather roofing tips with you. If you wanna hear more about cold weather roofing, please comment down below with any questions that you have. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing Channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we will catch you next time.